Hey there! Is today your first time here? Or maybe your first time in a while? If so, maybe you're wondering exactly who we are and what this church is all about. Well, we'd like you to know that we're a group of ordinary people who are on an amazing journey together, following Christ. Our guide is the Bible because it's the divinely inspired Word of God and it will never take us in the wrong direction. Along the way, we hope you'll see that we are welcoming and spiritually passionate and that getting to know you is a big deal to us. We know that the road is rough sometimes, but we'll work really hard to bring you practical and relevant messages to equip and encourage you through life's ups and downs. We want you to know that we care about this community and we believe that it's our job to make it a better place. So no matter who you are or where you've been, we're glad you're here with us today. And we hope that you'll join us on our journey, following Christ and living out His plan for us. So welcome to church. God bless you. God bless you. It is so good to see all of you here today uh, in Facebook land and also uh, YouTube land. I tell you, our God is good and he is worthy of all of our praise. God bless you, Sister Raquel. You're the very first one on uh, that responded. So it's so good to see you. It was good meeting you and your wonderful husband um, on Sunday. I tell you, God really met us in the room and uh, that's the kind of church I'm used to having. Amen. And I, it was it was just a blessed time. The word was so rich, uh, given by the three ministers that was there. Uh, uh, Pastor Mac, uh, Sister Mac, Minister McIntyre, uh, and I believe in the Elder J. Williams. And at lastly, it was Elder Gail Williams. Uh, no relation, but I tell you, it was a blessed time in the Lord. So uh, God blessed us and uh, people were uh, set free and delivered, and I just just praise God for what He's doing. There's my brother, uh, brother Arnell. Hey, God bless you. Still praying for you, my brother. Amen. Um, and let me tell you, we're living in the last days, and um, it's incumbent upon us to seek God like never before, and that's what we're going to do. Uh, just seek Him like never before. I had a very good Bible class on last night with uh, Pastor Ramsey. And also uh, this morning with um, uh, Pastor Gail as well. Pastor Gail, God bless you. Well, we're going to get started with what we have. Uh, forgive us for coming on late. And uh, with me coming on late, I did not bring our conference line people in. Um, I'm here at a church and I uh, was meeting someone and it kind of went sideways. But uh, we're going to get it together here um, and see what thus says the Lord. Thank you for uh, your patience. We're getting ready to get started here. Hey, Amen. There you are. Hey, God bless you. Yeah, it was good seeing you. Yeah, yeah, we had a good time. With the yes, we did. There's my singing sister. Please enter your six. Hey, Amen. There's Bishop Ramsey. God bless you, Bishop. All right. All right. God bless you. God bless you. Hey, Amen. I. Okay. Well, we're having difficulties getting online with our other people. Amen. But we're here to do it in the name of the Lord. And um, okay. Give us one minute. And I again, I apologize um, extremely for not having this set up. Okay. Well, God is good and he's worthy of all of our praises. And uh, we're going to get started in a minute, as I said earlier. I 
did not get a chance to bring out our conference line people on. Okay, we're good. We're good. We're rolling. We're rolling. Amen. 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 Uh, God, we do have my um, engineer on today. So thank you, God, Lord, Sister uh, Clarissa. So good to see you, Bishop. Amen. And been enjoying you. And I look forward to seeing you real soon. Amen. He He's a man that he just shakes up towns wherever he goes. And so glad to see him. Uh, he'll be on at 730. So um, I've just kind of like, I'll bring you the appetizer and he brings in the main course. God bless you. Uh, let's let's get into the word of God. Again, uh, for those who have joined us on with Chicago, I had a very good time with, with you guys. The Lord came in the room and blessed us uh, so immensely. So keep us in your prayers. We'll keep you in our prayers. Father God, we thank you for this day and time and hour that you've given us to enjoy, to experience you once again. God, I pray uh, blessings upon all those who will view this. Lord, I, I, I pray for health and I pray for the strength of your people that are going through today. Now, Lord, ask, we ask that your word uh, go through and Lord, let it change, charge and challenge us to go to the very next level that you have us to go to that we will be what you have called us to be, that you have intended us to be. Lord, bless your word. Use me till you use me up. If there's any sick on the line, I pray, Lord, that your word will meet them where they're at, Lord, and, and, and meet every need and heal bodies. We pray blessings in Jesus' name. I pray. Amen. 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 Well, we're here in the name of Jesus once again, and uh, I want to get started. Uh, thank the Lord again for Pastor Ramsey on last night. Preached an awesome uh, class. I'm going to pick up where I left off and look like the more that I've been looking to cut this off and, and start something else, the Lord just keeps extending it a little bit more because as I, I hear so many people say, the word of God is so inexhaustible. It is inexhaustible. So uh, you just keep digging. For, for diggers, they understand that uh, the more you dig, the more you find. I'll say that again. The more you dig, the more you find. Hallelujah. Even in something as simple as a verse as Jesus wept, you can read that verse for 10 years. And when you begin to dig into that, God will give you a greater revelation. God bless you, Sister Ruby. Amen. That's my sister in Christ and and, and sister on the fire department. She used to go get out there with the guys and, and pull the hoses and swing the axes. But, but when you get into the word of God and really begin to dig it out, it, 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 it's so illuminating. And it is the illumination that gives power. It is the illumination of God's word that gives life. And I just hope all of those who are lackadaisical with their Bibles, that you will become enthused enough to, to not only pick it up, but not only to read it, but to study it and to get the gems out of it that God has. So tonight, uh, we're going back and we're going to continue our uh, manifestations of victory. Uh, I, I wanted, I'm an overcomer. And what an overcomer is, I'm going through this very, very rapidly. What an overcomer is, an overcomer is nothing more than the believer's manifestation of victory. It's already done. It's already done. And we talked about uh, think biblically, talk biblically, and uh, we're talking about how to act biblically now. And we've talked about forgiving, uh, memorization of scripture passages that specifically addresses overcoming anger and bitterness. Uh, we need to pray always. All of this is encompassed within uh, acting biblically. Pray always with thanksgiving. And this is something, and I'm not going to go through these, but I, I would like to go back through this and just keep this in mind. Identify all danger signals and take immediate action to eliminate it. What, what are my triggers uh, to bring me into sinful anger, to bring me into holding grudges? Uh, recognize those triggers and eliminate them. Seek out Christian counsels and Christian accountability partner or biblical counsel. And this is the one that we have been working with at least for about three, maybe four weeks. Uh, correcting the deficiencies in your life that exist because of a lack or of discipline or neglect. I'll read that again. I'll read that again because it's so powerful. Correct deficiencies and, 
And uh, the scripture says, if we if we say we have no sin, then uh, basically we're not telling the truth. It doesn't mean that we're practicing sin. And one interpretation, if we say that we have never sinned, but I'm here to let you know that as, as long as we're in this flesh, sin is always going to abide at the door. Whether if we let it in or not is up to us. But it is those fleshly deficiencies in which so many people, uh, I'll say it, so many people fail to acknowledge. It is those, it is those deficiencies. I've, I've got to plug my, my uh, thing up. It is just about to go out. And it's one of those days, I tell you. It is one of those days. But God is good. And he's yet on the throne. He's yet on the throne. I do not want it to go out. Um, I'm going to break away just for one second here. I'll be right back. Thank you. Okay, I apologize. I feel like um, Keystone Cops. <laughs> but we're here in the name of Jesus. We're going to get this straightened out. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. So we, we talk about, um, we talk about the deficiencies. And it's like anything else. If the deficiency is not properly addressed, we will find ourselves in a place of death. As you see, I'm having a difficulty. But we're going to get it. Thank you. Thank you, Holy Ghost. We're going. We find our place self in a place of being spiritually sick and eventually dying. God bless you, Sister Randolph. That's where we don't want to be. So it's like when you find something. I, I preached a message, uh, I think, two weeks ago. If you see something, you say something. And as we do con continual inventory of ourselves, and I say this all, all of the time, that me personally, I'm just talking about me. I don't know about you. Maybe uh someone here is a little bit closer to God than I am, and that's good. But I don't have time to worry about anyone else's salvation or what they're doing or what they're not doing because I focus on my spiritual life. Watch this. And I, Pastor, why do you say this so much? Because it's so important. I want to say it the right way. We have to be that vessel of honor. I just don't want to just wear the title of just having salvation. But I want to become, I want to be a victorious salvation and one that God can work through. I used to sing a song you years ago, use me, Lord, for your glory. God is God chooses to use the vessels of honor for his glory to the fullest. Now, yes, yes, he chose people like Pharaoh. He chose people like Judas uh, to accomplish his will. But as he works through, it is his desire to work through a vessel that is clean and a vessel that is honorable and that is vessel that is trying to be like him. And it is those vessels that God manifests his self through and his personality the most. Uh, E.M. Bounds once, once wrote, for those that have done great things for the Lord in the Bible, and I'm paraphrased, have been those who, who have spent a considerable amount of time with God. This is one of the reasons, beloved, that I, I'm not stuck on titles or positions because God is not stuck on titles and positions. He, he There's true, there is a hierarchy that belongs in the body of Christ. But the real question is, can God work through you and can God speak through you? Whether if you be a minister 
or whether you just be a member, the criteria and the standard God is continually holding us up all to because I may not use you to speak in the pulpit. I'm, I'm, I'm going to stop holding back. Because I, I said it, and my brothers, they, they, they kind of they got on me a while uh, when we were in the radio uh, broadcast. They said, just let the Lord have his way. So I'm going to let the Lord have his way. So I'm, I'm, if I get happy and throw my hands up, that's just me. I know it's supposed to be Bible class, but how dare I speak about the goodness of God and, 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 and not feel his presence? Thank you, Jesus. So when we go, what we were saying earlier, that when we understand about what God wants to do through us and how God is preparing us. He may be preparing you to speak a word on somebody's behalf inside of the grocery store. And if, if, if our lives are not fit that God can use, then God will pick someone else. I think I, use, I sing the song every now and then uh, by Paul Morton. Uh, whatever you're doing, Lord, in this season, don't do it without me. Hallelujah. If you're healing in this season, God, don't do it without me. Lord, if you're delivering in this season, Lord, I don't want you to do it without me. Now, it is our desire, and I, I tell this to our people all of the time, that it's up to us to do a self-inventory to find out where we're at. And find out where we're at, then God is able to move it. So, so we have to define and identify the deficiencies that are in our lives. And the problem is, and it's a problem, the problem is sometimes Christians think because they have seniority, which, you know, I've been in the way for so long, or, or I'm, I'm, I'm the president of the frying chicken committee, or, or I am the Reverend Good Dr. Body, that I don't have any deficiencies. Well, right away, you got a major deficiency of fooling yourself. So as we continue to talk about these deficiencies, these deficiencies led us into um, Colossians 3. And we went down through that. I think this is where we left off on last night, on last week. But now is the time, and this is New Living Translation, to get rid of the anger, the malicious behavior, the slander, and the dirty language. And as I said on last week, for a Christian to continually practice all of these on a continual basis, I question how sincere they are. Well, Pastor, you going into legalism. No, no, no. It's, a, it's about living holy for God. I'm not saying that if you do any, things that you, any of these things, you, you're not saved. Watch this, Paul is writing a letter to the church here in Closey that was facing legalism. They were facing uh, 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 asceticism uh, to, to try to do good deeds and, and try to make them right. They were facing false teaching. And, and as, as we see today, and I'm, I'm not throwing any shade, but for those of us that have been rooted and grounded in the word, we see Today, how the word is being manipulated, we see here how the word is being uh, uh, adulterated and adjusted to fit people and to make it easy. And what we're having, uh, what 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 the results of that is, is a weak body of believers that cannot cast the devil out of an ant because some have compromised by listening to fables, by listening to things that are not true not being ready for the battle. So it's, it's, it's important that we get rid of, not lay them aside, but that we get rid of the anger. Well, Pastor, and that's that's one, one of the things that we've been talking about for the past few weeks, because I'm talking about just a little short amount of anger, this anger that lingers on. As young folks say, make you feel some kind of way when you see somebody. You march all around the church and, and shake everybody's hand, but, but Sister Lucy did you wrong. 
then you want to stand up and and conduct praise and worship and and you want to stand up and and, and preach a sermon and, and you want to stand up and, and sing in the choir uh, to sing somebody happy yes you could do those things but it will not be effective and it will not be pleasing to God because once God reveals this to me then I have the responsibilities of getting rid of them hallelujah I know it's tight tonight but I'm trying to get you to a place. And as I said earlier, when we're talking about uh, uh, this, this passage of scripture here in Colossians, we're talking about kingdom altitude. Then we talked about kingdom attitude. And today we're going to be talking about kingdom apparel. As the first verse here in Colossians says, if ye be been raised with Christ, then it's our obligation to seek those things which are above. Now, since if I'm seeking those things which are above, then what's happening in the altitude, I can't take this rage. I can't take this malicious behavior. I cannot take this slander. I cannot take this dirty language. And so many Christians, oh, Lord, why are you taking me here? So many Christians, and I have been guilty of it in the past. I have been guilty of it in the past because just like everybody else, uh, years ago, I got caught up into my flesh and, and what somebody did wrong, I said, you know what, they're not right. It may not be right, but with the attitude that sometimes Christians have, uh, they did wrong. Uh, they should be put in jail. They need to be suspended. That's God's job. You know, we, we and, and I, I try, I, I've tried, I've really tried to break away from conversations that that, that 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 talk about other ministries, that talk about other preachers, that talk about other songstress. Because if we're gonna talk about them, then let's pray for them. Oh, I know it's hot on tonight. You sit down and talk, and it won't be long. Oh, yes, yeah, such as such. Well, my reply now, yeah, they might be that way, but God can change them. Let's pray for them. You see, sister, uh, 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 sister Sal at church. Every week she's coming up for prayer. Hey, can't nobody do that much sin. Well, pray for her. Because when we begin to talk about one another, that's when the slander comes in. And I'm, I, I like what the word says. The word says, give no place to the devil. Holy people, we 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 don't drink, we don't we 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 don't use drugs, uh, uh, we don't chase after uh, other other people, wives or husband. But let us watch that tongue. As I said on last week, all unrighteousness is sin. Your leader make a decision, and and, and I'm not talking about myself, but I've heard a leader make a decision, and the decision may not quite be right. The leader may make it wrong, uh, and he, he or she have to deal with God on that, and you'll find a group of people, a sect of people will try to bring that leader down. Lord, leave that leader to God, because if the leader is right with God, God will show him or her how to, how to rectify uh, the decision that they made. I remember years ago, and I'm, I'm going to try to get to the lesson, and Bishop, we, we're going to get you up in plenty of time. I'm not going to rush, but I'm just going to walk through this, but we're going to make sure you, we get Bishop Ramsey up in plenty of time. I made a decision years ago, maybe about the sixth year into our ministry, uh, because we had people visiting, and uh, one group of people that I was picking up from a, a drug rehab uh, facility, they said, the only time that we can get here is at noon. I said, you know what? Without consulting God, I said, I'll set up another service. So we would end one service, then we would start another service. And to my knowledge, to my knowledge, that, that because I didn't consult God, that that decision did not last maybe just a few months. To my knowledge, I don't remember anybody talking about me that I could hear. I'm talking about decisions like that 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 God had to correct me. We will abort our promises by slandering our brothers. We will abort our promises by slandering our sisters. Child, she done had another baby and it's over with. What have we done to contribute to the turnaround and the repentance of those who have fallen? I, I, that was not in my notes. So I, let me move right along. Let me move. I, I, I'm trying. I got to get through this. I got to get through this. So he says, and in, um, in 
the King James Version, it says, pull off. I've got to pull these off. Why? Because I'm getting ready to change clothes. And what God put in my spirit, he says, these are, you get ready to put on some new, if you allow me to say, undergarments. As we look in Ephesians 6, it tells us about putting on uh, the armor of Christ. But until we have the attitude that is correctly, then we cannot wear that arm, we cannot wear that armor correctly, and it will not fit if we do not have the proper undergarments in place, which affects our minds and our spirits. Lord, I'm, I'm, if I get happy, I just get happy. This is part of the deficiency that we, we, we got to stop carrying grudges. We got to start loving one another. Why? Because God want to take us higher. Anybody want to go higher? Just, just, just tap in. Let's go higher. Let's go higher. Let's look at what 9 and 11 says. And this is so powerful. And, and allow me to just add Eric's words into this just for a moment. Now, I know the scripture says, and do not lie to each other. Can I put in and do not deceive each other? Because sometimes a person can tell a partial truth out of the act of deception. Come on, let's be real. Let's be real. We've all been there. Oh, well, maybe me. I mean, I'm, I'm the only one need to listen tonight. I apologize. Since you've taken off your old, since you've taken off your old self. At, with with all with all of the practices, see when I become a new creature, as I as I said on last week, Bishop Ramsey said so eloquently that it was my spirit that got saved. It was not my flesh that got saved. And one thing, Lord, you're taking me here, but I'm gonna go here. One thing that prayer does, prayer allows for this internal inspection to occur in our lives as much as we go to the cross. Because the word teaches us that our own righteousness is as filthy rags. And if we don't find ourselves in prayer, if we don't find ourselves in the word, then we cannot, that's right, uh, Sister Donna said, then we can't go higher. And what we will end up doing, we'll end up lying to ourselves that I'm all right. And that lie will turn into another lie to tell somebody else that I'm all right as well. Since I've taken off all of these old, my old self and the practices, then I've got to put on my new self. <laughs> Somebody ready to put on my new self. I need to put on my new self. This, this is where uh, uh, my kingdom apparel comes in place. And I want to let you know something because it says, which is being renewed in the knowledge in the image of its creator. That's important because as Christians living in this world, the Christ in us, the, the purity in us has the tendency of attracting junk. Mm -mm -mm. Hallelujah. I don't know if uh, my wife and I, we, we, I like to think we keep a pretty fairly clean house. But I tell you, when you start dusting the furniture, you start looking at dust that have settled. Lord, help me in this place. You can't see the dust until you make a closer inspection. Thank you, Jesus. It is the dust that represents the fleshly part of our lives that what dust does, if it's not taken care of, it will turn into a higher level of dirt. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm teaching. I, I, I'm teaching to myself. And unless we do the inspection, it looks good from a distance. But when we get a little closer, we will see uh, what's there. And we say, well, it's time to dust this thing. I don't care how clean we do the house. If we don't take time to dust, you find dust all on the mirrors, all on the pictures. Somebody say, dust your house. Got to dust your house. Got to dust your house. So why? Because automatically we are being introduced. Our minds are out there. 
our, our, our flesh is out there. Our spirit is out there always being ready to introduce to other fleshly things and other fleshly desires. And just because you got over one, brother, do not get too confident because I'm here to let you know that the devil is trying at so many venues to get to all of us. You think just because I'm a, I'm a pastor that he's not after me? In fact, he's after the head many times more than he's after the body because if he can destroy the head, then the body will die. That's why I, I request prayers. I told my prayer team this morning during our 6 a.m. prayer, I told them I could not do what I do without your prayers because if we do not pray, I'm here to let you know that the enemy is easily can get an advantage. I got to move. I got to move. I got to move. I got to move. We, we may get through with this. We may get through with it. may not. So it is, it is that image. I'm, I'm coming back to that. It is the knowledge in the image of the creator that needs to be renewed. I think it says in James, uh, when a person is, a, uh, 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 when he doesn't, when he's uh, uh, not a doer of the word, but only a hearer of the word, it's as if he looks in the mirror and watches and forget what he looks like. This is what the renewal talks about. And Paul even says it over here back in um, in the beginning of, yeah, in Colossians 9. And I want you to listen to this. This is, this is very powerful because he understood then and it's understandably now that Paul says, here in Colossians 1 and 9, he says, we do not cease to pray for you that what? That ye may be strengthened with all might, what? According to his glorious power and unto all patience and to all long suffering and to and with joyfulness, now that ye may be strengthened with all power according to his glorious might, for his endurance and patience of joy. Then he goes on to say that we, I, I want to come back to that later. This is one of the reasons why we, that our mind and our spirits have to be renewed in the knowledge of who he is. I remember where I brought this scripture up. Who is, who is, uh, Colossians 1 and 15 says, who is in the image, watch this, this is heavy, of the invisible God the firstborn of every creature. I have my knowledge renewed in who God is. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I've got to, I, 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 I've got to have it refreshed. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I've got to get it refreshed on who he, I've got to get it refreshed of the knowledge who, who he is. Because just as we stand strong in the knowledge. The enemy wants to take that knowledge away because if he can take the knowledge away, then he will take the faith away. If he takes the faith away, then he will take the incentive to live for Christ away. That's why he comes with a, 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 a blinders, not only on the unbelievers, but he comes with blinders on the believers. Why? Because if I can take your knowledge away, he's always after our minds. He's always after the mental part of us. And if we can stand strong and draw a line, Lord, help me in this place. Draw that line and say, no access here. Thank you, Jesus. No access here. Because I'm going to keep my knowledge renewed of who Jesus is. Thank you, Lord. Let me tell you something, what God will do. If we don't do that voluntarily, God will put us into positions where we were, that we will remember how great he is. God will put us into positions of, how should I say? He'll put us into positions of dependency upon him. When, when, when Paul was talking about being in the image of the invisible God, uh, he got to remind myself that I've been made in the image of who he is. And when I look in the mirror of the word and anything that's not right, like God, because I got to wear this undergarment. If, if it don't fit, I got to quit it. <laughs> I cannot become too big within myself. 
I've got to wear this undergarment. And, and part of wearing this undergarment is to keep in mind that I'm supposed to be in the likeness of Jesus Christ. Paul talks about the image of God, I think, over in uh, 2 Corinthians 4. Then he talks about it, about Jesus being involved in, in the full creation or over in John 1 and 3. Since all things uh, were made by him, without him, uh, there was not anything made. Uh, but in the believer, once I'm a new person, I got to understand that I have been designed to grow. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You just type that in. I have been designed to grow. I've been designed to grow. I've been designed to grow. I've been designed to grow. I have not been designed to stay in the same place. I've been decide that have been designed to grow. Now uh, you got to go back to John 15 because anything that is not producing fruit, God has the tendency of purging that. So somebody may be going through a purging season. But if you have been designed to grow and if you have been designed to uh, produce fruit, then there's some seasons that we have to go through where God says, you know what, I I'm not hurting you, but I'm just cutting you back. So, so your desire and, and, and your knowledge will be renewed and who I am that you want to be like me. That's what that's what the Lord is just saying here. God wants us to be like him. God wants to be like him. Let us get to the next scripture because my time is running so rapidly. Hallelujah. 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 So I'm, I'm in this image. I'm in this image. Let me get to the next verse because I got to move. School commercial. Years ago, talk about I want to be like Mike. I want to be like Mike. I want to be like Mike. No, I want to be like Jesus. Because the 10th verse here in Colossians, 11th verse here in Colossians 3 simply says, here there is no Greek or Jew, circumcised or uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave or free, but Christ is all and is in all. There are no preferences. See, when, when our knowledge is renewed, we will understand that we're all on the same page. We're, we're, we're all on the same level. And what I mean by the same level, we're all in the same category. You, you, you hear him talking about different races of people? No, there's, there's only one race. That's the human race. And what Paul was making a stipulation because it's it's easy for people and you and you see it in secular world and sadly you see it in somebody believers. Some begin to pit themselves above others because they got two dollars in their pocket and the counterpart only got one dollar. Some begin to promote themselves over others because they can remember four scriptures and their counterpart can only remember two scriptures. When, when my knowledge is renewed, well, I'll understand that Christ is the head of all things. Hallelujah. He's the head of all things. I want to be like Jesus. That's right. That's right, Sister Linda. I want to be like Jesus. I want to be like Jesus. I don't have time to be wanting to be like anybody else. And it's amazing for those who, who know me, know that when God made Pastor Eric, he made an original. And I'm not that much better than anybody. I'm not better than anybody at all. But I celebrate uh, who I am because God made me. And God says, I made you to be what I want you to be. And as I said on Sunday, I, I, I planted you where I want you to grow. And once you embrace what I've called you to do, then you will find life going smoother that only comes through renewal. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Let, 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 let me, <laughs> let me, let me uh, uh, just give you a demonstration. When my knowledge is renewed in Jesus, sometimes all it takes is just a praise. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Because when you begin to praise God, from the bowels, 
when you begin to praise God from the on the inside, not an emotional thing, hallelujah, but it comes through a spiritual thing. My spirit just remembered how great you are. Hallelujah, hallelujah. My spirit remembered how you brought me out. My spirit remembered that there's nobody greater than you. My brothers and sisters, this is the composition of real worshipers. Those who have allowed their knowledge in Christ to be renewed because a real worshiper cannot just sit with his mouth shut or with her mouth shut. A real worshiper cannot sit with the presence of God is going on and, 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 and there's no reaction. Uh, even, if, even if you just have a tear, that is a reaction. But a real worshiper is constantly being renewed. A real worshiper is constantly having his or her knowledge uh, increase and revive on a daily basis. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Just, just just, type in, renew my mind. Renew my mind, Lord. Renew my mind. Renew my mind. I want my mind to be renewed on a daily basis. I really do. Hallelujah. Because if it's renewed, guess what? It, it inspires one to go a little bit further. It inspires one to keep moving. It inspires one to not stop. It inspires one to be joyful in sad situation. It inspires one to exclaim God is the highest when the whole world is darkened. My mind need to be renewed. I want it renewed. I want it renewed. And, 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 and I, just not just on Sunday morning, God. I want my mind renewed on a daily basis. I want but the knowledge of who you are. Paul says in Philippians 4, that I might know him and the power of his resurrection. And I always say that sometimes we read that and we move on. Oh, I want to know him in the power of his resurrection. Then he says the second part, and in the fellowship of his suffering. <laughs> suffering sometimes renew the mind. Thank you, Jesus. Suffering brings us to the feet of Jesus. Hallelujah. When it brings us to the feet of Jesus, all of our acknowledgement is on him. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. I got to move. I got to move. I got to move. I got to move. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. I want to get to a point and to where I want God to be in my life. I want to read a passage of scripture to you. Um, in Philippians 1. Philippians 1. And nine, and it reads, and I pray this, that your love may abound still more and more in the knowledge of all discernment. Hallelujah. Here is Paul praying again to the Philippians. Because if you can just understand who he is, let me tell you something. And I want to be, um, this is not a condescending remark, but it's a sad remark. That there are a lot of people in the body of Christ do not really know who Jesus is. And let me rephrase that. That have a very, very limited knowledge of who he is. Because if we knew who he was to his fullest extent, our joy, our determination, our focus would be at his highest priority. This is why we need these services and times. And I thank God for those who uh, 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 come out and I see some of the same faces on, on Pastor Gail's uh, prayer at 6.30 in the morning. I see some of the same uh, faces, uh, uh, Pastor Everidge and, Everidge and uh, Pastor Ramsey and Bishop Ramsey and Bishop Parks and, and on Kingdom Perspective, because we understand, we understand that I need more. And what the spirit, I've always said, and I'm 
Haven't, oh man, I haven't even got to even the middle part, but I'm gonna have to shut it down. I always say the spirit knows things that we don't know. As we as I said in scripture, God works everything from the end to the beginning. In other words, the plan has been made. And if our knowledge have not been uh, uh, revived or increased or strengthened in Christ, we'll get lost in the journey and not want to go forward. And so as we're lost, there is no appreciation. There is no homage. There is no honor because we really don't know who he is. My grandfather, the late Russia Sherman, used to sing a song, Do You Know Him? Do You Know Him? And I'm going to leave it right there. I'm going to leave it right there because I want all of us to be in a constant state of renewal. I haven't even got to the meat of the lesson. I'll have to bring it next week. I told you, I'm going to just flow with the Lord. I'm, I'm trying to get done with this. That, Lord, I want to do your will. And when you get to that place, I'm, 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 I'm going to give you a heads up. I'm going to give you an indication. How do you know that you're getting there? Because you begin to see things from the perspective of God. You begin to see his plan. You begin to, watch this you'll be able to exercise his compassion. You'll be able to exercise your appreciation. You'll begin to exercise. Watch this. This is a big word that I'm going to work with on Sunday. God gave me a word. And, and for those of uh, my friends that are in Chicago, this is the word that I was going to bring, but God had other plans. He will begin to exercise your faith. Oh, my goodness. Hallelujah. When my knowledge is renewed on a daily basis of who Jesus Christ is, watch this in my conclusion, my faith level go to an all-time high. Mm -mm -mm. Let's get it. Let's stay in a place of need. Lord, I need you on a daily basis to the point that I want to be renewed in your knowledge every day. I, I want to be renewed in the knowledge of who you are and what you represent and what you can do in my life. I'm going to stop right there, beloved. And uh, we pray that the word of God was a blessing to you. It's so good to see you, my brother Arnell and sister Deborah Randolph and uh, missionary Linda Donaldson. Amen. And um, Bishop Ramsey, we're going over there. Uh, sister Jimmy, amen. So glad to see you. That's a working sister. Uh, Sister Devon, Sister Raquel, and if I miss, I can't see who's on the YouTube side. Everyone is on the YouTube side, but God bless you, my my, my good friend and my neighbor, uh, Reverend Walton, uh, Leo Walton. So good to see you on tonight as well. Stay prayerful, saints. Let us recognize these deficiencies that we get around them, that that we get them out of our, our lives. Hallelujah. Just one announcement, and look for the announcement on our website. Uh, Trinity Central West website. Our conference will be convening um, August 17th through the 19th. Uh, we have a, 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 a litany of visitors that are coming to impart the word of God uh, through through workshops and through preaching the word of God. Uh, Pastor Johnny Bonds, who's the owner of Kingdom Bookstore here in Toledo. Uh, uh, Dr. Jackie Nelson uh, out of Detroit. Uh, Pastor uh, Kellen Brooks out of Inkster, Michigan, our own beloved uh, Bishop Tony McNeil uh, will be here preaching the word of God. We have our own Trinity Central West preachers that will be preaching and exhorting. And I, my, 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 my best friend, one of my best friends, and he's like a brother to me. Amen. He, he's, he's sending his son, and that's Elder George Parks, will be here visiting with us as well. Uh, he will be one of our guest psalmists. It's going to be a great time in the Lord. Uh, the schedule will be up on, on our website uh, tomorrow. Uh, just look uh, and just be a part of it if you can. If not, keep us in prayer. I don't know exactly how much will be put on Facebook, but just keep us in prayer. We're trying to uh, enhance the body of Christ. 
Now, we, I will tell you the theme of this year's conference is casting nets in deep waters. We got a job to do. And for those that are not afraid, God wants us to get into those deep waters and cast those nets. Amen. We look for a great time in the Lord. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you, Lord, for this opportunity that you've given us. Lord, I pray that your word will go forth and do what you have accomplished it to do, which we know that it will. We pray for every need and every sick that's on this line on today. Lord, I pray peace and blessings upon everyone. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. God bless you all. We will see you on next Wednesday. God bless you all.